I really hate saying this, but yeah. Castlevania Nocturne is kinda really bad. And no, this isn't another video talking about how Annette is black. Now, I need to specify. I love the original Castlevania series. It is one of my favorite shows of all time. I just finished rewatching all of it to get ready for Nocturne because I was super hyped for it. And when I watched Nocturne, I was disappointed to say the least. And there's a lot going through my mind when it comes to this, so I'm going to be breaking down my thoughts on Nocturne in no particular order, so just be ready to listen to my ass ramble. The pacing of this show, with lack of better words, is shit. Season 1 of Nocturne had 8 episodes and didn't even accomplish what Season 1 of Castlevania had achieved in 4. Here's what I mean. By the end of Season 1 of Castlevania, I had an attachment to all of the main cast, found the villain interesting, and understood everything that was going on. Now for Nocturne, my thoughts after finishing season 1 can be explained as, Richter is a little bitch, Annette is, is more of a main character than Richter, Maria has like no character, this guy needs to shut the fuck up, and for the love of Christ, who is this lady? Oh hey, it's Alucard. <laughs> It's all good now. They tried to cram way too much into the start of the series. In season 1 of Castlevania, it spent its time establishing the main cast and villain while Nocturne really wanted to hit the ground running. We got introduced to so many characters who I genuinely don't care about because we didn't get proper explorations with them. Richter's mom dies, and instead of spending more time with him to get to know other parts of him as a character afterward, Richter just spends the first four episodes telling mid-ass jokes and talking or thinking about how his mom died. I'm dead serious when I say that, by the way. I cannot think of another part of his character than his mom died. And when it seemed like he was going to get an arc with Juiced Belmont, he just cried, and then when under pressure pulled some anime bullshit and got super strong. None of his power or what happened there felt earned in the slightest. And and Juiced like appeared, was like really cool, and then just said, eh, life sucks, evil wins, and then fucked off. But that's just Richter I'm talking about. The lack of introduction to Maria immediately made me not really have an attachment to her. I said this when I was watching the show too. I felt like there should have been at least a scene of Richter as a kid meeting that whole family. I would have been fine with all of episode one just setting up the current situation of the series. Just like Castlevania did in its pilot episode, and it performed great. Annette needed less screen time, if anything. They genuinely were the main character of season one. I don't really have much to say, other than she just gets, like, overly good treatment, compared to characters that should be objectively more important. And again, Maria is just kind of there. We don't really know them on any deep level other than her daddy issues. I wish I could say more, but she really is like barely a character. She got sad at one of her birds dying, and I didn't really feel much because the show didn't build any care towards the bird or any of her familiars. And they barely explore the fact that she's able to summon familiars. Like that's, that's, it's, it's like, yep, she's a witch. And then they just move on. And her dad's a dumbass with idiotic motivations. Like I get that villains are supposed to be flawed to like have their, like what they're doing even happen because typically villain motivations are flawed, but this guy is ridiculously stupid. He wants to keep the church alive by creating a demon army and teaming up with a vampire messiah who hates God and calls herself a goddess and gets pissed whenever he ever talks about worshipping his actual god. And oh god, don't even get me started on Edward. He could have been a good character, but the pacing fucked him. He appeared with Annette, talked minorly about his past, died, and then we basically got an episode solely on Annette and Edward after he died. I didn't care at all when he died, because he literally just appeared, sung a little bit, he needed to do that way less, and died. And I was just annoyed I had to spend an episode getting to know a dead character. They should have placed that episode before we met them, but they can get a B plot so that we could get invested in that situation and characters before he died. Castlevania is no stranger to really well written B plots. Oh, and then he broke our entire understanding of Night Creatures and how they've been established in all four seasons of Castlevania. That was genuinely my least favorite part of the show. It took the pre-established rules and world building of Castlevania, took a shit on it, and lit it on fire, dude. Remember when Isaac was talking to his night creature, who said he was some philosopher in Athens? Someone who was an incredibly different person than the person that he turned into a night creature. But now, 
all night creatures are the exact person they were before, and Edouard is just special, just cuz. Oh, and by the way, did you know that the French Revolution was happening? I sure didn't feel like it. I forgot about that so much, like, it really felt undertouched on. It doesn't feel like there's a revolution going on. The city, city, city's pretty good until vampires came in and fucked it up. If there was a revolution going on, there'd be a lot more murder and chaos between uh, humans. There's just so much going on that it's a jumbled mess of solid ideas with shaky foundations and a cast of incredibly underdeveloped and borderline unlikable main characters. And I kind of went over it earlier, but seriously, this villain, dog shit compared to Dracula, Carmilla, and even Death, who got like an episode a half of screen time, and is genuinely one of like the weaker and most valid arguments and complaints to have about the original Castlevania series. I don't even remember her name, she just like exists and is all powerful and is evil. There's no real time we get to know them like we got with Dracula. And there's no depth to their character. Like, Carmilla was like angry at a like, uh, vampire lord, Dracula wanted to avenge his wife and death is death. It was just overall like really not good. But I love Castlevania and I hope they can bring it back in season two. But as of right now, I have very little hope in this show. Castlevania Nocturne season one can be summarized as a season that tried to do way too much in too short of a time period and should have spent most of the season fleshing out its world and characters like its predecessor did so well. I will give the next season an honest try as well, as I want it to win me over, and maybe it will. And with that, I finish rambling. It's been an honor, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Also subscribe.